to recognize not only the excellence in science and the importance of all that we, which we've heard this morning and will for the next day and a half hear about, but also for an addition to that scientific prowess, something that all of you know is absolutely critical, and that's the healing, touching hand of a caring health giver. So it was that this prize, the Pinedo Prize, was conceived in that duality. Excellence in science and, and prosecution of that method, but also compassionate care of the patient with the disease and recognizing their family as well. So it was that that prize, the Pinedo Prize, was created. And this year, uh, the fifth year of the Pinedo Prize Award, is now, we're very honored to say, a part of the responsibility of the Society for Translational Oncology, for it has fallen uh, to our remit, that is the Society's remit, to conduct it hereafter. Uh, since um, the, uh, the prize's conception, it was very easy to see the person who should be first entrusted as the first Pinedo Prize recipient, and that is none other than our host and the editor-in-chief of the journal, The Oncologist. All of you who know Bruce, love Bruce. You all know that what you see in Bruce is the real deal. And those of you who have had the honor to refer a patient to him or to be uh, seeking his consultation about one of your patients, you know the depth of this person in that very special way that made it very easy for the nominating committee to award the first Pinedo Prize to Bruce A. Chapner. For in fact, it sent a message, a message that Bob Pinedo himself created for the life that he lives, the, pay, the pay, uh, care of patients that he provides, and, and the significance of his message to all of those who he has trained. So it was in keeping with that great tradition that the prize winner became Bruce Chapner. I'm delighted to ask Bruce now to come to the podium. Well, the reason my, I'm hunched over here is, is not because of old age. I tried to run yesterday, and it's not a good thing to do after a three-month layoff because I have back spasm. Actually, I may have been related to carrying the Pinedo hand, this, this statue around. <laughs> anyway, I, I thought I would uh, just briefly tell you something about uh, my uh, friendship with Bob. It began in... 1974, I believe it was, at the International Cancer Congress in, in um, Florence, where I got a message that somebody wanted to find me. And this uh, young man from Holland came uh, looking for me in, the, I think, one of the piazzas there. And uh, he was in a rush. And I said, this guy's got an amazing amount of energy. I don't know if I can cope with this. And uh, he said that he wanted to talk to me about uh, his working at NIH, he had made an arrangement with Paul Carbone to work in his lab on, on uh, bone marrow stem cells. And Paul had just then decided to leave to go to the University of Wisconsin, and Bob needed a home. So I, I took Bob, not really fully appreciating what a whirlwind it was going to be. It was uh, about a, I guess Bob was with us about a year and two months, and it was just you know 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He accomplished a great deal. Um, went home knowing a lot about of oncology, had met his future wife, and he also carried a mouse in his pocket when he went back to, to Holland, and he somehow got through customs. It was a tumor-bearing mouse, I think, and he wanted the, the cell line, and, and we had no easy solution, so we just put it in his pocket. And God knows what his suit looked like afterward. But <laughs> he's a determined fellow. So uh, he came back to Holland, and over the, the next decade or two, really established the premier clinical uh, cancer center in Holland, and uh, it was a service that was associated with uh, the, the research interest that Bob carried forth as well, and uh, it was really a symbol of the, uh, I think, of the, the best of American oncology carried to, to Europe, and 
now as one of the prominent centers in, the, in Europe. Uh, <clears throat> I was particularly honored to, to, to receive this award. Of course, the, the selection panel were all trainees of mine, so <laughs> it, was a, it was a done deal, wasn't it, Bob? <laughs> but uh, today we uh, have the pleasure of introducing one of my trainees, Pat, Patty Johnson from Belfast, who is the chair of the selection committee for this, year, this year's award. And uh, I think that it w we all know who it is, but we should recognize it and hear about this person. Thanks, Bruce. Um, so it was an honor for me when I got a call about five years ago from Bob asking me to actually take on the chairmanship of the selection committee. And I have to say it's something that we've taken great care with, starting, Bruce, with you. Um, and I think Joe is still here as well. So we have two of the previous awardees here. Um, just a little bit about the prize. Um, um, the prize is awarded on an annual basis by the Society for Translational Oncology to an individual who has produced notable advances in cancer patient care or translational research and who is a practicing physician, particularly entrusted with compassionate care for patients. It's actually given in Bob's name in recognition of his pioneering work in oncology, particularly in Europe and also his outstanding contribution and distinction as a physician and oncologist. Um, any of us who have tried to follow in Bob's boots and Bob's footsteps actually have ha had uh, very large shoes to fill, particularly within the European framework. But I know that our awardee today, and indeed myself, have actually looked to Bob for very careful advice in how we go about building meaning incredible cancer centers in Europe. And for that, I personally am very grateful to Bob. Well, our latest recipient is, it's no secret who it is. It's uh, Dr. Jose Bezalga, um, who's now uh, metastasized rather than migrated maybe <laughs> uh, to MGH. Um, and Jose is well known to, I'm sure, everybody in the room. Um, he, he's highly respected for his contributions to translational medicine and translational research, specifically to the translational knowledge that he has developed and informed around the EGFR inhibitors, and in particular EGFR antibodies, um, and their development both against EGFR1 and HER2. His contributions include the demonstration of the effect of EGFR antibodies um, and also its impact on signal transduction, both in tumor tissue as well as normal tissue, in both animal models and, of course, particularly in the clinical trial setting and in the treatment of, of patients. His development of critical biomarker studies in relationship to the effect of these antibodies uh, have been extremely important in guiding the field and in the development of these drugs. His career um, exemplifies and our committee was unanimous in this, really exemplifies both aspects desired of this prize, including groundbreaking translational research and excellence as a hands-on, caring and compassionate physician and clinician. And Jose is definitely all of those. He very much travels in the tradition that Bob has set for us. And I know that he too, uh, like myself, has gained hugely from Bob's input and experience. He's widely recognized by all of us in this room as an international translational research leader in this new age of biologic therapy. So on behalf of the society and on behalf of my members of my selection committee and also on behalf of the previous recipients of this uh, very important prize, it's an honor to ask him to come up here and for the hand to be presented by Bob Pineda.
thank the previous speakers for all they have done. And uh, I'm extremely proud that uh, this is the prize winner of today. Jose, great. I wish you a lot of success in Boston. If I can invite you to give the Pinedo Award lecture. So thank you so much, uh, Patty, and, and, and thank you so much, uh, Bob. Uh, we all have, uh, those of us who are in drug development, we all have uh, Bob Pinedo stories to tell. Uh, and I think that clearly uh, um, when I went back to Europe, uh, Bob had um, uh, what was the premier site for early clinical trial development, and, and basically your effort at the university was a real hub of people uh, from multiple sites in around the world uh, working there. And you know, shortly after I arrived in in in, in Europe, I began to ask myself, "Am I going to make it there? It's so complex, it's so difficult." So everybody I ask, "What shall I do?" They all said, "Go and talk to Bob." Uh, so I went to talk to Bob, uh, and I remember we had a number of interactions, and um, you were extremely um, insightful. Uh, and that's interesting because in Europe, as you know, the countries are different. So a person that is in Holland giving advice on how to make it in Spain uh, is not that easy. But 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 he did, and over the years, I've always um, been fortunate by your advice and by your guidance, and actually. Uh, we all have copied a lot of what you did uh, in all uh, the centers uh, that are doing uh, phase one clinical development. Uh, so um, I'm very pleased and very honored uh, by having this award.